What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Enigmatica 6 and today we are finally going to be setting up the induction matrix. Now before we jump into all the different mechanism things that we're going to be doing in today's episode, which includes both setting up the induction matrix and also doing a lot of prerequisites to get us to the point where we can actually do that, I want to run through a couple things that have happened since last episode where we set up the five times or processing right down there at the end of the hallway. Greg the Wither is clearly watching over it, making sure it is running flawlessly. He's basically the engineer of that setup, just maintaining it so that it's running perfectly all the time. And we can see the payoff of that. If we look in the refined storage system, there's a lot of things that have been processed pretty much fully in here. The iron is completely done. The redstone's completely done. The diamond, it still has a little bit of a backlog to go through. If we take a look at the chunks left in our system, you can see that there's a lot less than there were before, but there's still a lot in here that need to be dealt with. Mainly the 16.5 thousand diamond chunks that are sitting waiting to be processed and I'm pretty sure right now at least three of the four machines are just consistently processing diamond chunks so there's a lot more that's going to be coming into our system but I am super happy with how it's all worked out and if we take a look in my inventory you can see that I've spent a fair bit of time on the world since last episode I don't remember what the time in the bottle was at last episode if we took a look at it but I've probably accrued at least 24 hours of in-game time if not more including AFK time while I let things process and crafting time and also time doing a little bit of work around the base on things mainly i was working on setting up the material stonework factories over here which are allowing us to get sand so this was one of the main things i mentioned last episode needed to be dealt with if the system wanted to continuously run and we finally dealt with it just by setting up eight of these and if you don't know how these work they're basically generating cobblestone just using some water and lava that are passively sitting in there they don't get expended at all obviously but it's generating cobble, then it's crushing it, and then it's crushing it again. So it's a single block that's going to generate the cobble, turn it into gravel, turn it into sand. We've got some speed and efficiency upgrades in here, and they're all set to do the same exact thing. And then they're dumping it in this interface import section right into our refined storage system. So we're actually getting a little bit too much sand, as you can see. It's gotten quite a large buildup in here, and so probably gonna have to make an off switch for that at some point but I'd rather have too much sand in here than too little and then our ore processing system isn't able to actually function but that's pretty much where we are since last episode a lot of good stuff happening and it's made it a lot easier for me to craft all the stuff that's in our backpack right here that we will be using for today's episode because there's definitely a lot there was a lot of crafting to do a lot of steel to make to get all this stuff done so I'm glad I had all the iron and this is really only half of what we need for today's episode, but we need to get all of this set up first so that we can get our lithium dust. All of this is just for getting our lithium dust so that we can start working on the induction matrix parts. So once we have all this set up, we can get into the induction matrix stuff, but this is the first thing that we need to tackle in today's episode. So today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than normal when it comes to setting up the thermal evaporation plant. Obviously, I've got everything crafted and ready to go to make two of these at maximum size so that we can generate a decent amount of brine, dump that into the next one, generate lithium, convert that into lithium dust, and then come back here and do all the crafting we need to make the induction matrix. The only thing is, normally I would set everything up in the base right here. As you guys know, I'm pretty much a hermit. I like to just stay in my base and especially here I'm just underground doing my thing having a good time not having any sunlight at all and that's totally great because that's how I prefer it but I really don't like the way the thermal evaporation plants look the color is not going to go nice with the base it's just it doesn't match the theme of this and I don't really think it warrants making an entire area just for them so we're going to be taking a little bit of a trip today to set up the thermal evaporation plants somewhere else in the world that's a little bit of a ways away from the base that they're not going to be constantly loaded they're not going to be an eyesore and if we need anything like lithium dust we can just go over there and get some but they're not really going to be that intrusive so we're just going to hop upstairs i know it's weird seeing this for the first time in forever and we are going to come out here a little bit of a creeper accident there's some serious creep yep there's another one i was gonna say there are some serious creeper accident areas around here if we just you know take a quick scan you can see them eh, a little bit you know here and there because i'm definitely not as careful as i should be but if we take a look right here i have a red rock lowland ready for us to set this up in 
and I decided this area is where we're going to put it. Obviously, you know, the biome can kind of matter with the heating element of the thermal evaporation plant, but we're not going to be passively heating it either, so I don't really care. The solar generator should be enough on top of it to get us more than what we need, and I figured that this biome right here it's kind of suited for setting these up. I mean, look at these. You got the red rock that's pretty tall. It's pretty much the exact same color as what we're gonna be setting up today. And there's a nice flat area right here where we can just put both of them and we should be good to go. So I think this is going to be the ideal place to set these up. And if we take a look at the map, it's really not that far away from the base. So we can just walk over here if we really needed to. But I just have one of the waystones set up over here to get here if we ever need it. And then I just won't load this in so they won't constantly be running. Because again, there's really not much I need from these other than the immediate lithium dust for making the induction matrix. Okay, so both thermal evaporation plants are set up. They are good to go. They're both 18 tall. If we take a look, they obviously have nothing in them, but they're already at their 1.6 thousand Kelvin temperature pretty much for both of these. This one's still slowly going up since this was the second one to be constructed, but we should be good to start dumping water into one of these. I'll probably do this one, getting some brine out of it, dumping that into this one, getting lithium, and then putting that into the rotary condensator, converting that into gaseous lithium i believe and then that needs to go into the last machine the chemical crystallizer which then will make our lithium dust so we do need to slap some valves down on each of these i think we should be good to just put one valve what it just went right out of my range we should be good to put one valve right here and we can grab out our kitchen sink and we have our mechanical pipes so we'll just do this kitchen sink right there get out our configurator and set this to pull from that and this should start working. So we already have, wow, that filled up with brine really quickly. Okay, well, then we're just gonna do the same thing over here and right here. And we'll just put a valve down on each one of these so that we can go straight from one right into the other. Put again, the mechanical pipes, set to pull from this. And this one then should be getting our liquid lithium. And now we should be good to finally convert it. Right, you know, I'm gonna do it out the back here. So we'll just break it right in here. So we should be good to just slap down the rotary condensator right there, put it right into the top. We'll just see if we can pull from this, have it going in here. We do need to flip the operation here so you can see now it's pulling in the liquid lithium. So we should be good. And we are going to need to bring power to these. So I do have the quantum entanglo porter. We can just put that down right here and we're gonna set it to the melons channel. By the way, we're finally going to fix this today because we're going to have a different channel then for our power output from our power storage once we finish setting up the induction matrix. So I'm really excited for that. So we'll stop using the melons channel and it won't have 64 melons sitting in there every single time as an item that we can pull out. But either way, we just need to make sure that this is setting to output. I just set it on all the sides. This is gonna start running. Wow, that is really annoying. Uh, I'm not going to speed this up for now. Let's just go into my inventory. And again, we'll just use this. And oh my gosh, so nice. I just every time you guys have no idea. That's probably the nicest quality of life mod I have ever played with. I'm probably going to put that into the surviving with series from here on out just because it is so nice. I don't even know what mod that is, but it's really nice. So then we're going to put down the chemical crystallizer and we need to have it bringing in the gas input from all the sides, so that should be good. So we just need to have this outputting gases out. It should be on auto eject on that side. So which side is that technically to this? I have no idea. So we're just gonna set it to output on all of these. Okay, well, there we go. It's gonna be a little bit awkward if it tries to output it into the quantum entanglement porter. I don't think it, is it? No, it's not. Okay, good. Well, now we have our lithium in here. So all we need to do is grab out our elite universal cables. I should really upgrade these, but now this is running too. So again, oh, so nice. Let's just get the chemical crystallizer and there we go. So this is gonna run slowly and get us all of our lithium dust. And we're gonna need a decent amount of this. Obviously the induction casing, 
not going to need it. The induction ports, not going to need it. But doing the induction cells, the basic induction provider and the basic induction cells are both going to require this. So four of these for each one, if we plan on making like an ultimate induction cell, obviously every further crafting step doesn't require more of it, but you're still going to need the base. So you need four for this, then you're going to need 16 for this, then you're going to need 64 for this. And then finally, you are going to need, what is it, 256 to make the top one. So might have to wait a little bit if we're going to be making the ultimate induction cell for this to process everything or grab some speed upgrades. But either way, we should be all good now to just wait, accrue all of this. And then we're going to go back and do some automated refined storage setup stuff so that we can auto craft pretty much anything we want in here just to make our lives easier. And we're going to do it on camera today because a lot of people, when I did all the refined storage automation before, were asking, how'd you do it? How'd you set up auto crafting? How'd you do auto processing? All of that stuff. So we'll do a little bit of it on camera today so that if you guys are curious about it, well, you can see how it works. And if you're not curious about it, well, there's not going to be too much of it. So hopefully it won't bore you to death. But if it does, well, then I don't know what to tell you guys. It's just a little bit unfortunate on that one, I guess. Okay guys, so the lithium has been produced. As you can see, if you look in the bottom right, we have 320 of it good to go, which is exactly five stacks of it. And that should be enough to make a single ultimate induction cell and to make an elite induction provider. And that's my goal for today. Get all the casing done, get the ports done so that we can put power in, take power out. And then the ultimate induction cell should be more than enough for storing the power now. And we can just slowly tack more on. I'm really going to try and just use ultimate induction cells though, mainly because I don't feel like putting in any of the other kinds here and then having to pull them out and upgrade them later. Since if I just decided to AFK for like 20 minutes, I could make multiple of these with how much lithium we're getting. But either way, not too concerned right out the gate today. I just want to get the setup up and running. Really, the big thing, though, that we need to do is auto crafting for this. So there's a lot that we need to set up for this if we want to go all the way up to the top tier. But the first thing that we want to take a look at for these is what is the main component that makes these annoying? And if you've ever made these before, you already know the answer. That is the energy tablets. Now, these things are not hard to craft, but because they have a durability, pretty much because they store power in them, they cannot stack. So we are going to be making a pattern for producing these. I'm going to use gold because that's what I have more of right now. Obviously, you can use copper, too. But really what you're going to want is to make sure that you have a pattern for infused alloy, which I already do. And then this is just a crafting pattern. You'll need a processing one for the infused alloy. Chances are you probably already have that. But we're just going to make a regular crafting pattern for the energy tablet. That's good to go. Next thing we're going to do is we can automate the crafting of the induction casing, too, if we really want, because we have steel. So we can set this up. And we got to make sure, though, that it is the correct steel. So if we take a look at my current crafting pattern for steel, it is the Edigmatica version, the universal version. So this is a huge pitfall that you'll run into with auto crafting because it's going to try and fill it in with the mechanism version. Now, I forget. I know there's a way you can somehow click on these to set it to be just a general version. But either way, I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to drag this in and set the recipe for it myself since I don't have any in storage right now. And it's still going to give us the induction casing. Again, I know there is a way somehow I'm forgetting what the key is, though to hit to make it so that you can change these and select which criteria can be used for that actual pattern. Either way, though, another crafting recipe. So now we have the one for the induction casing. I don't really think it matters for the induction ports, but we can also do it for this, too, because I do have the elite control circuit pattern automated alongside that. So we can do it for those, too. Then finally, we can start working our way through the induction cells. So this one, we can just slap this in here. Obviously, the only thing that we'll need is we have the energy tablets. We have the lithium dust, but I don't think I have an energy cube recipe. So we will come back. And once we finish putting all of these in there, then we will go and do all the different energy cube recipes, too. But the nice thing is these are all crafting, which means that we can just toss them into an upgraded crafter and we should be good. And these are also going to use the energy cube recipes. They're just also going to use control circuits. So thankfully, I already have patterns set for all of those, too. So saving myself a lot of time by having done all that earlier on in the series. And chances are, if you've got any form of like mechanism auto crafting set up, you probably already have those done, too, just because it makes it a lot easier to automatically process all of these and get them going when you're crafting 
any mechanism machine. And I will say, I did all that just to make the PRCs over here and quantum entangler porters. Really, those are the two things that I wanted to auto craft PRCs so I didn't have to make all like 70, 75 of these. And so I could auto craft all of my quantum entangler porters. Either way, though, we've got four patterns left, which works out perfectly because the last things we need to make are these energy cubes. And I think I already have a steel casing recipe. These obviously need energy tablets, which we just made. So we're just going to make sure everything's right. Yep. Just generic iron. Cool. So there we go. Pattern for this one. We got pattern for this one again, already got the infused alloy. So we should be good on that. Another pattern for this one right here or no pattern for the elite energy cube right here. So this one's going to use gold pattern for the reinforced alloy. I already have set up. And finally for this one already got the atomic alloy set up too. And there we go. So apparently I had the perfect amount of patterns. It's looking like we might need to make another crafter here because you can see there's, there's a lot of stuff that I have set up in here. So are we seriously one short? Oh my God, we are one short here. Okay. Well, you know what? I guess we're going to be making another crafter because right here, what are we missing out on? Wow. Okay. You know what? I'm going to take out this ultimate induction provider because we're not going to be making that today. I'll make another one of these off camera and get it set up because I want to orient everything properly over here. So we'll just, we'll just hold off on that for now. We'll leave this pattern right over in my backpack, man. That is, we were so close to being perfect today, but either way, now, if we go and take a look, let's say we want one ultimate induction cell. So we've got a recipe for that. And if we go start, it is missing. What? What didn't I just put, okay, we have lithium to, oh no, this is the Enigmatica version and this wants to use the other one. That's what I was warning you guys about. Okay. So clearly there was one issue with this and we can talk about how to rectify it now. Obviously this pattern doesn't need it. This one doesn't need it. This one doesn't need it. But, or this one needs it, the basic ones. These both are needing the lithium. Now there was something else in there that looked like it was a little bit messed up. So let's go to see what else was missing. If we were to start this, it, okay, so it's missing the osmium from mechanism. Okay, so that's another one that's a little bit messed up. If we take a look at the recipes, we can see which one of these needed the osmium. Uh, was it the induction cell? And it was probably the energy cube. So is it the elite energy cube? Nope. It was the advanced energy cube. Okay. So we'll go and fix those really quick. So both these need to be adjusted. And then the elite energy cube needs to be adjusted. And again, that's how you can tell if there was an issue with these. And I believe, what do we do to clear them? We just shift right click right here while they're in our hand and it will empty the patterns out. Then we can dump them back in here and we can do it again. So again, we're going to be making this except when we make the lithium, we are going to come in here. We're going to ditch this lithium and instead we are going to use this lithium. So there we go. We have the induction cell and we'll do the same thing with the induction provider. We do not want the mechanism version. We want to make sure it's the correct one. And there we go. And then finally we need to go and do for the elite induction cell, elite energy cube. Nope. Advanced advanced. Click that in there. And I was going to say, there's no way we are low on osmium. So we're just going to make sure it's the correct one for that. Click that in. Boom. Now it should be good to go. So you guys got to see how to troubleshoot that. If you do in fact run into issues, I ran into that a lot when I first started out. And so when you're automating stuff, if you're a little bit confused, that could in fact be the issue. But if we go to look at our cells now, if we go to make an ultimate induction cell, we should be good to what? Okay, so I did a little bit more work because I was still running into some issues. Apparently, I did not have a recipe for the Elite Energy Cube. I swear I made one of these, but apparently I didn't. So I guess we actually had two spaces that were missing. So I ended up making a second gold crafter. I should probably just upgrade this one all the way to a netherite, but either way, it finally filled out. So it looks a little bit nicer now. There's no one piece of spruce sitting down here. So now all the recipes are in there. Everything's been properly adjusted. So we should be good to go with this. So if we go 
to craft the cell we want to make again, finally, for like the third attempt, one ultimate induction cell from scratch. So if we click start on this, there's a lot of crafting that's going to be going on. We can see this entire thing. It is making 564 energy tablets. We've got all the enriched stuff being processed automatically and we've got all of the steel being made so this is probably going to take a fair bit of time you can see the entire system working all the stuff over here is going on we got stuff probably being dumped into all of these to be processed because we have pretty much every tier of these being required all the way from the basic infused alloy going all the way up to eventually we're going to need the ultimate alloy but we also have all these interfaces automatically importing the enriched redstone and diamond and coal and all that. So you can see that working. I just think the system that runs like that is so cool and it's probably going to take a fair bit of time. It's going to need a lot of steel, I guess, to make this too. So it's a good thing we only went for one of these. But uh, yeah, probably going to be waiting for a little bit. So I'm probably just going to let this finish processing and we will hop back once it is totally done and then we should be good to set the rest of this up and finish things off okay guys so the crafting is about to finish we can watch it finalizing right there which means that after pretty much 21 or 22 minutes of crafting and processing and all of that our ultimate induction cell is finally done now it was a lot less painful than manually doing it i have to say but it definitely took a really long time which highlights the fact that I pretty much need to set up multiple metallurgic infusers, at least for things like making steel and making the infused alloy, since we're not really going to be using the ones that make the reinforced or ultimate alloy as frequently. But still, the ones that make the lesser tiers of it, oh my god, I was waiting so long for those to process everything, and there is still more to do. So we need to go through and at least start out by making the induction matrix casing and then the ports so i'm going to make like a stack of this i think that should be enough i don't know how long this is going to take but i'm really hoping it's not going to be nearly as long as it took to make that ultimate induction cell there's no way because it doesn't need nearly as much and then we'll start having it work on the induction provider, which again, shouldn't take nearly as long, but we'll let that run while we deal with some other stuff once we have all this crafted. So this one's going pretty quickly, but really the things that we're going to need to deal with before we actually put this setup into action is the fact that we need to use this elite energy cube over with the wither setup because when we start diverting power and potentially i'm going to try to avoid this but when we potentially divert power from our current quantum entanglo porter channel and eventually we'll be using a new one so i will need to make the switch but i'm not going to do it right now on camera but i'm going to try and set it so that this one stays full so nothing loses power in the base and then all excess power goes to the matrix which we'll be putting right here but I'm a little bit nervous about doing that because if something goes wrong, I don't care if anything else in the base loses power except the stasis chamber. That is a huge no-no for losing power because if it does, the wither's getting out and Greg is having a field day tearing into our base. And I do not want to deal with that. I have saved the world before every single episode since we put him in the stasis chamber. Anytime I'm on here, I save the world so that I know if I have you know any issue with it, I have a backup ready to go. No problem so far, but I am not looking to tempt fate. So we're going to put this down once we are about to start hooking everything up over here, just to make sure if anything goes wrong, we are at least sort of in the clear. Now we are going to need two induction ports, so I'm also going to start crafting those right now. And we can watch as this finishes up, and then we're also going to have to do the provider, like I said. So we can always start the crafting for this now. We're only going to need one of these. I actually don't even think, if we look at these, I honestly think that the advanced induction provider should be fine for us for now. So I might just go with that to save us a little bit of time, because we're really not pulling out that much power. So an output rate of, you know, 820 kilo FE should be totally fine. I don't think we need anything even remotely close to any form of mega fe so i think that should be okay if we look at the crafting down here this one it's actually almost done too so that's great which means that our induction ports if i could type our induction ports should be done right here i think 60 induction casing should be fine i might start crafting another 64 because eventually we'll expand on this uh, and then we will wait to see the induction provider finish. We can grab that out and then we will be good to go. And it, it should be done in a second here, I would think, just because 
If you take a look at this, what's it at? Oh, it's at 79%. Okay, again, yeah, it's being, we can see with all of these, they are being held up by the production of things like steel. And what is this one being held up by? The control circuit is not process. Oh, it's because, oh my gosh. See, this is why you don't start crafting other stuff before this is done. Okay, it, it started to slow down because I believe of this processing stuff potentially. Um, but yeah, this should be finishing up. It's 97% now. So once the control circuits finish processing, this will be done and we can start setting it up. And if we need more induction casing, that'll be fine, but we can go and grab our provider, which should pop in here. There we go. So this is going to be a pretty small setup. There's going to be a lot of air room left in here, but my main goal when I set up this room was to have all the power generation on the sides here and then right here, which might have looked a little bit weird. This was not meant to be uh, just to look like this, even if it looks fine, because I guess the Gabbro kind of matches a little bit. This was meant to be the indu induction matrix down here. And we're just kind of going to tear into this. I, again, do not need it to have this much room, but eventually we will expand it to match this. So that'll be the top layer right there. This will be the middle and then we'll have a bottom and the ports will be on the middle layer. I really need to make that atomic disassembler like you guys suggested because man, I am just tearing through stuff right here. Okay, there we go. Well, sort of, I guess we can, we can kind of repair this a little bit. So it's not totally ruined. There we go. So we're going to put down our induction casing here and we're just going to cover the entire bottom of this. And it's occurring to me that it was probably a good thing that I made more of this because we're going to need it and then we'll put the ports down we'll put one down right over here and the other one we can put wherever we want it actually really doesn't matter so maybe we just put it where's the center of this one two three four five six is one two three four five six seven eight nine oh my gosh there is a middle right here haha -ha. that it doesn't matter so we're just gonna put it right there because this is going to be where the port goes right here and then this will be where the quantum entangler porter goes as the output this will be where the wiring goes to bring from our xnet system the additional power in here so now we can just fill in the rest of this i'm not going to use any glass for now because there's going to be so much air in here that it's going to look really stupid so we'll put down our two things so our ultimate induction cell we can put right here the induction provider can go right there they look a little bit wonky but they do in fact connect and again it was a really good idea that i started making some more of the casing because we're going to need it because <laughs> it's pretty big even though we don't need all that space well it's not really that big but it's bigger than we need so here we go and did i do it right yes i did okay no surprise there thankfully but now we need to hook this thing up so we kind of need to tear into the floor a little bit over here and get everything connected. Oh my gosh, every time. I'm going to try and avoid breaking any of the blocks that are, what would you call it? Any of the, I don't even know what you call those. The Oh no, those are spruce stairs. Okay, for some reason I thought we had some of those framed blocks and I don't feel like dealing with putting those back down. But we need to go up there now very cautiously so I don't break anything. And we need to bring the cables down and then put down a connector. So we've got the cables, we've got the connector, and it's occurring to me now I'm probably going to need to get an advanced connector upgrade. So we're just going to run the cabling right down here. We're going to put down our connector right there. This should be set as input, so it should be okay. And before we hook any of this up, I need to go do that stuff I was talking about. Again, because I need to be very careful um, that we're not going to mess anything up here. So... We're going to come over and we are going to put down some supplemental power in case something happens with the stasis chamber over here because i don't want greg getting out i really 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 don't so we'll just break our way down Ooh, we got some iron right there break our way down here and we're going to put down oh this is a little bit awkward um i guess we can put it going into this is so weird because i really don't want to break the terracotta there because that's directly below the room but i guess this should it should be okay to break this i'm hoping please okay and then we're gonna put down our elite energy cube there and we are going to set it to i'm gonna put it to it's not that it matters but i'm gonna put it to output on all the sides it's on input and output but i am so nervous i just everything's output on the sides auto eject is on 
it can start pulling power from this if it needs to so it should be okay so we're just gonna hope that nothing goes horribly horribly wrong with that i'm gonna leave a hole in the floor over here so we can come back and deal with that and make sure that everything's fine once we hook this whole thing up but now that we have that we're gonna make a quick advanced connector upgrade these always have these are always so weird because i know for some reason advanced connector upgrade okay it's it's super weird sometimes when you search up connectors from xnet because they don't always pop up uh i don't know why but either way we have the connector upgrade kit we're going to put that because it'll allow more power transfer in here so we're going to click that up oh, we're going to click that right on there so connect these and now we should be able to set a channel for this inside the XNet controller. So let's take a look and see if it pops up in here right there. Yeah. So I scrolled by it. So we're going to create an energy channel for this and we're immediately going to set the priority to negative two. This is crucial and we need to be quick about this. So, uh, you know what? Can we like, let's, let's do this. Let's do this. We're going to make a channel to put power into the sink and we're going to set it to negative two because the sink's not going to take any power. And then we are going to copy this. And we have it set for the quantum entangle porter to be negative one with the purpose of everything else in the system immediately around this that generates the power, getting power before the excess goes into the rest of the system. So negative two should mean that this will get any excess power once the quantum entangle porter and the rest of the system is also full. So we're going to paste this in here. Priority is at negative two. The immediate thing we need to look at is does this stay full? Is this staying full? And then is this getting power? So this is getting power and this is staying full. Now, the next thing that we need to be concerned about is how fast are these dropping power right now? So these are all finally burning through fuel. And a lot of you guys probably wondered, and these, these are gonna have fuel sucked out of them pretty quickly soon too. So we need to be careful about this, but um, a lot of you guys were probably wondering why I only had two gas burning generators and now I have four, but a, a ton of people were like, oh, he's only supporting these, all these PRCs with two of these. When you do not have somewhere for the power to go, the system is only going to pull the power it needs. And I was never pulling more than two millibuckets per tick of power. So only one gas burning generator was running. A lot of these were just sitting idle. As you can see, you know, some of them are starting to run as stuff gets pulled out of them. But a lot of them are sitting idly because even though we've got a ton of stuff in our base running right now, nothing really needed to use any of the power. So now we can put down more gas burning generators to make sure that we are consistently utilizing all the stuff that we're generating in this setup. I don't know why this is stalled out here. This is really weird. Some of these are, oh no, it's just going really slow. Oh, because I don't have speed. I haven't put speed upgrades in here because there was no need for them. I needed to figure out the perfect ratio behind speed and power utilization. But either way, we can look. I mean, we're generating right now a fair bit of power, if you ask me. Obviously, we've got a lot of power that we can put in here, but I'm really happy with the generation that we're getting from this, considering these are all running at max, but we've still got a lot of stuff in here that's not even running. It's just idling. And so I'm going to see how many of these we can put down before we overtake the amount of PRCs that you know we have in here and are currently producing as you can see we're we're draining out a lot of these right now so four of them may be sufficient unless we had some speed upgrades in but uh that should be pretty much it obviously I can come over here now and I can just come down right in the middle it should be right here and we can put down a quantum entangler porter since I have one made and we should be good to set this to be a new power channel. So we can make a new one. We can set it to power, good to go, set that. And we can have it set so that the energy is being input on all of these. And now we'll be able to use that for power, which is great if oh, we need to set this to output first. I totally spaced out on that. So we need to grab out our configurator and there we go. So now it's set to output. Now this is getting power. That's great. So I'm going to slowly transition all the stuff in the base over to getting power from this. So we're going to have this system dump power into all of these so that they're still able to run. Then it will dump power into this and then power will come from this to go to the rest of the setups. So that should fix any potential issue we had where these weren't running and just kind of wasting time doing nothing and idling. We finally have some power storage in the base and it looks like Greg is still being contained over there and we're not having any issues yet. I'm just a little bit concerned that once these are all drained and these are not able to run at full capacity, 
since we have currently four running at full capacity, I want to make sure that this does not start losing power since we have some serious power drainers in our base running off that. Things like the ore processing and ore generation. So I'm going to call it there for today on the episode and then I'm going to go potentially deal with some of this stuff um, so that we don't run into any issues. But hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on a future one as they come out every Monday and Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I will talk to you guys later.